This is a recap of the I See You In There book study, week two, chapter three. And this week was all about grief. We did a quick recap on the name story and learning a little bit about each other. And somebody made a really good point about that some names are preserved for those that are closer to us. And there's a level of familiarity with nicknames and just being thoughtful about when we are inside a bubble and are allowed to call kids on our caseload by their nickname and when have we not yet quite learned that right and being uh, brave enough maybe to even ask them can I call you that I noticed your friends call you this can I call you that Uh, we briefly touched on are you a yes person or a no person because we didn't get to it last week Uh, this group was a resounding yes person group There are some few no people that we will love to learn from throughout the rest of the weeks. And then, you know, there were people that were no people turning into yes people and yes people giving permission, giving themselves permission to say no. So um, it was insightful. And it's also helpful as you are working with kids to know that everybody leans one way or the other. And if they are a no person, then start with teaching no, the shake, the head shake of some kind and uh, work towards the yes and begin to ask questions that require them to try on a no or try on a yes. In the chat, you guys, so many people just talked about how grief was individual, how checking in versus checking out. There were people that talked about extending grace and assuming that anger or withdrawal was part of grief and it helps you operate from a better space. I just wanted to bring out the names of all the people that we've learned about so far in chapters one, two, and three to remember that we stay people focused and not systems focused, not content focused, not even subject focused, but people focused. We focused on the eight items on the white circle here but there is a parent piece that I talked about in the chapter as well that is in the chapter, but we didn't cover on the webinar today. We talked about first listening and hearing things that sound like grief. So as parents are talking and saying, I didn't give it to them. I I don't know what the paperwork says, but it's not a chromosome. It didn't come from my side of the family. Apparently it wasn't my genes. You, when parents are telling their diagnosis story, you can get a sense that there is, um, there's always some level of guilt or explanation or wanting to let people know where they're at with that. That's sometimes something that people talk about with very young children. But as you move forward, families continue to get diagnoses and things that are surprising. And anytime there's new information, sometimes that grief cycle starts over. Also, anytime that there is, my daughter turned 16, there's that moment of this was not how I thought my daughter's sweet 16 would look like. And sometimes that cycle just starts over again. And there's a little bit of you get to feel sad about that for today. And you get to work through it and walk through it and get to the other side of it. And so listening to parents when they're ready to share with the thought of compassion. We talked about modeling, projecting, visualizing, and verbalizing hope even in meetings, talking about what we love about the child, what we love about their personality, how we've gotten to know them. And that projects a lot of hope because we're not talking about um, IEP goals and progress in academics. We're talking about the human being. Refraining from judgment. Again, sometimes people come into a situation with a lot of angst or with frustration because it's something that they believe they can control and um, refraining from judgment because I think it's easy for us to feel like I don't understand this and this is not what I would do. 
parents of kids with disabilities have to make really challenging choices. Sometimes it's what I gave the example of today was the uh, my child's having trouble breathing, but that would require a spinal fusion and that there's complications with that. And there's everyone's got to make those decisions based on the bodies in front of them, based on the information that they have at the time. And more medical information comes out later that may have changed their course, but that's not what they knew at the time. So we give grace for the decisions that are being made in real time. Not comparing grief stories, and we talked about this in the book, about everybody's heart is just hard. And just because some grief stories sound more complicated than others doesn't mean that every story isn't valid and isn't real and doesn't require walking through. And so being careful not to be one that compares. We talked a little bit about distance and separation and how that might be the natural reaction and to fight it. A mom joined in and talked about how her therapist kind of broke a little bit of maybe boundary rules and outside of therapy and outside of obligation really supported them during their daughter's surgery and how surprised she was. And then therapists joined in about how That's interesting that you were surprised because we do think about your kiddo all the time when they're not here and we wonder how they are. And I do need to reach out and let parents know that I feel for them when they're going through things. So we need to fight that I need to give them space idea because you can reach out and the parents can choose space. But if you don't reach out, we're choosing for them. Considering the intent behind thoughts and prayers, this was something in the discussion regarding are we checking in and checking off the list that I said something or are we really checking in and seeing if there are ways that we can support the family. Meeting people that are angry with love and hope is absolutely required because anger is often a go-to emotion as you're going through certain stages of grief. And many people in the chat wrote that grief as individual was the number one thing that stood out to them in the chapter and just letting that be. They don't have to do grief the way you do grief and they don't have to do grief the way another family that you know has the same diagnosis, the same situation from the outside looking in, allowing people to walk their road. So we broke out into breakout rooms and we talked about, have you witnessed responses, flight, fight, freeze, responses in IEP meetings, and what strategies could you use? And then parents also jumped in on that. So that's a Padlet that we'll be doing in the webinar throughout the next few chapters. So it was really sweet to see your responses and people are continuing to add to this so we can increase human connection. That's a wrap up. Thank you so much for everyone brave enough to come to a webinar called Grief. And we'll see you next week on Diagnosis and Prognosis.